Hey everyone, it's me, X Canadensis, and today we are going to be talking about some new doll releases, and Leggy is here too. She wanted to be here today. Uh, so, first we're going to be talking about the new Monster High dolls that are coming out, and then we're going to talk about some Rainbow High news, and finally I have a little teaser to show you guys for tomorrow's video where I actually get to be part of the launch. Generally, I don't do doll news videos just because I feel like I don't have any new information to share. I don't have insight i'm not the person finding the leaks but i do like talking about them and my opinions on them so it's something i'm open to do in the future i've done it a few times i used to do it a lot more but without further ado let's get into it so first we're going to be talking about monster high and this picture unveiled this morning and has everyone so excited and then shortly after they announced the price and everyone got a little bit less excited but let's talk about it uh I'm not here to defend the price. I think the price is ludicrous. Although I will say that these are exceptionally higher quality than the Skelector dolls. The face paint style is much better. They're not stamped. Um, at least it doesn't look like they're stamped. If they're stamped, then disregard what I just said. Uh, the clothing quality is much better. There's way more accessories and detail to them and they have rooted lashes. So to me, $75 compared to the Skelector dolls at the same price point, these are exceptionally better. And these are also exceptionally better than almost any collector Barbie that has come out in the past six years i'm not super uh, knowledgeable on collector barbie releases but generally they range from like 80 to 160 for a lot of the recent ones that i've been seeing there was that i think it was barbie looks one here's a picture of her and that doll i think was 160 dollars so if we compare to mattel's other releases i actually think this price is extremely fair but if we compare this to what every other doll company is able to do this price is ludicrous Lily from Rainbow High I do think was overpriced at $80. I don't think she was like ridiculously overpriced. I actually can see her quality there and she's definitely the highest quality Rainbow High doll by a lot that's been released so far. But if you compare Lily to one of these dolls, you don't see where that money went. And I think it's just the way Mattel... Mattel's not as good as giving you at actually delivering you quality. But I will say, judging again off of what Mattel is able to do... I'm going to point out a couple of things with these dolls, such as these fabric purses that they have, all of the unique original molds that they have, and they didn't have to do that because they could have just used old Monster High molds and nobody would have cared. So truly, they clearly did try, and these are clearly really, really good, at least in my opinion. I understand if people feel differently about them. So the first one I'm going to be looking at is Frankie, and this is the picture that made me die. This is the prettiest Monster High doll I have ever seen. She looks so good. I've been seeing a lot of hate towards this one actually, and I don't see where it's coming from because I think this is the prettiest Frankie by far. Uh, that face paint, I know that that is most likely the hand painted prototype, but if the released dolls come out with anywhere near that look in their screening, 100% sold. She is beautiful. Oh my god. And I love bold eyebrows. I know they're not for everybody, but for me, that's my absolute favorite look on dolls. I think it really helps balance out their dramatic features because dolls generally will have big mouths and big eyes. And then when you give them really thin line eyebrows, it doesn't work all the time. So bold eyebrows and on Frankie, like, wow, beautiful doll. Oh my goodness. She has the, I think they reused those earrings because of the designer collab that they have, which are these really expensive plastic earrings from some brand. I don't really know. Um, she has like a really cool, we're just looking at the bust upward right now, and you can see that the face has like blushing on it, it's really pretty. The hair is really nice too, as long as it doesn't have glue, we are good there. Monster High always had great hair quality, so I wasn't worried about that until the reboot, but you know, they're gonna bring back the saran and nylon for this. I don't know what her hair clip says, but she has some kind of hair clip. She has those earrings, which I don't have the original Wave 1 Frankie, so you guys are gonna have to let me know. That looks like a new mold because the lightning bolt on the post, I don't think that was there before, but if it was, I'm sorry. She has a really nice collared shirt. It looks like that might be two layers, but knowing Monster High, it's not two layers. It's gonna be, well, it'll be two layers, but they'll be sewn together. But if those are actually separate pieces, that would be really, really cool. So we have a collar, we have sheer with a bunch of stitches. It's very pretty. One thing I will say is that these dolls are much more fashionable than the original Monster High dolls were. Don't get me wrong, I love Monster High, I love their outfits, but when you boil down a lot of Monster High looks, they are blatantly not really fashionable. They don't really translate to today's like fashion scenes, which is totally fine because that's not everything in dolls to me. But these actually are wearing things that, in my opinion, look like something that you could actually see on other people in real life. And I think that's really cool because Monster High normally doesn't do that. Uh, and these are really cool and you can see the plastic accessories have painted details another thing that i think is big to consider here oh and the rooted eyelashes obviously beautiful face 
the most expensive part of toy production is actually molding, not only molding separate accessories such as the way Monster High each doll had different face molds and all new shoe, mostly had all new shoe and earring molds. That's the most expensive part because they have to make these gigantic um, metal things, they're called tools, and they have like hundreds of spots for the accessories to go in and they like pump the plastic in. It's really expensive to make those things. So Mattel has always perplexed me with the ability they have to make these separate accessories for each doll like this. So I'm really grateful that these do have separate pieces. There's also a plastic thing around her ponytail up top as well. Now we're going to look at the actual outfit. So image has changed. So it looks like we have the harness and then a thick belt piece underneath. I always hated those plastic belt things that Monster High always uses. This is just a personal thing. I don't really think it's a quality thing. I just think they never like sit right. But this is just so pretty and you can see the foiling on the sleeves as well. And they are poofy sleeves which is my favorite. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then she has the print from her original um, 2010 look on the, I think that's supposed to be like a, the bottom of the shirt. And then there's a skirt underneath it. I can't 100% tell, but it's very pretty. And you can see that they actually put zipper pulls, which is, again, something that Monster High and Mattel in general almost never, ever, ever did, was include tiny little accessories like studs and zipper pulls and stuff like that. So you can really see the influence that MGA's high, high, high quality with Rainbow High and stuff is really leeching into the Monster High dolls in a really positive way. And she, does, she has a little bracelet here, too. And once we move down a little bit more, we can see her shoes. These are so cool. So I'm not going to lie to you. Brett had to explain this to me because she has the, I don't know what they're called, but those like switches that you do to turn on electric things. I was thinking like an electric chair and I was like, that's kind of dark for Monster High. It's meant to be when, when they, when uh, Dr. Frankenstein brings the monster to life. That's what it's supposed to be. Brett pointed that out. I was like, oh, um, and then the shoes are also strappy, so it looks like when they, like, strap people to the electric chair. I don't know. It's really cool looking, though. It's just, um, it's a little darker than they normally go for, but again, I think it's actually, I mean, it's obviously actually the Frankenstein reference. I'm really embarrassed that I didn't pick up on that. Um, and you can see that her hair is actually curled a little bit at the bottom. I'm not sure if that's actually going to be on the doll, because this is, like, the really nice prototype they're showing us here. Overall, Frankie is my favorite one that we've seen so far, but I haven't seen close-ups of the other two dolls' faces because we nobody's seen those yet. They look so good, and I'm so excited. And we're going to be getting five of the original main characters. I believe they're leaving out Gulia, but everybody else is getting a doll. So the next two that we're going to see are Laguna and Cleo. I believe that's confirmed. Oh, and you can see her fabric bag in this picture. Sorry. It's not great because it has like printed on stuff. It's not the best, but it's a fabric bag, which is again, something we almost never saw in Monster High. The only one off of the top of my head that I can remember is Venus's little eco-friendly like shopping bag, which is really small and it's just two pieces of fabric sewn together. It's not that great. Um, so I love when there's really stiff competition in the doll world because you really see the dolls start to elevate. And it's usually Mattel that has to kind of catch up to the others, unfortunately, because Mattel absolutely refuses to give us anything interesting and new until another company starts to beat them. But um, that's why I'm later in this video when we talk about the MGA news with Rainbow High, that's why I'm actually excited about it. And I don't think it's like super petty or anything. I don't, I'm excited about it because as a consumer, none of their profits affect me. I just want to see cool dolls. And for this doll, personally, I would be 100% comfortable paying $60 for this doll because of this quality. Um, I am currently working minimum wage. I have multiple jobs. All of them are minimum, well, two of them are minimum wage and then I do get money from YouTube, but YouTube is technically paying me like substantially under minimum wage, but it's fine. I worked extra hours to be able to afford these dolls and I wasn't expecting them to be 75 each, but I do feel comfortable enough to be able to purchase these. But I do really, really feel for how much these actually cost. They're really, really, really expensive dolls. And I completely, the thing that I'm the most concerned about, cause I'm fine with them releasing overpriced dolls. They do it all the time with Barbie and stuff. It's annoying. It's frustrating as a collector who wants to support them and wants to buy them and is not able to, and it sucks. And I've been there and I was there for most of my collecting journey. Only this year and last year, I was able to actually buy almost every single doll release when it came out. And I'm really, really grateful to be in that position now, but I've been working really, really hard to get here. With these, I am totally fine with them charging however much they want for the collector dolls. It's annoying. It's not fair, but 
they have to have a good playline along with it. We have been supporting the Scollector dolls being ridiculously expensive and impossible to get a hold of for for a year. So I need the playline to actually be good. I understand the playline isn't going to have this level of detail. They're not going to have the rooted lashes. They're probably going to have stamped faces, but they need to live up to this design quality and they need to live up to at least a somewhat similar quality and they need to be under $30. Otherwise, this is completely ridiculous and Monster High is going to fail because MGA is able to give us LOL OMG dolls and the price has slowly increased, but generally you can get an LOL OMG doll for around $25 to $30, which is a lot for a doll, but... When you consider an LOL OMG has very similar quality to these $80 dolls, I just, it's not the best. It's frustrating and Monster High is a very beloved brand so that's why they're able to do this, but it is still very um, frustrating. All right, next we're gonna switch gears a little bit. We're gonna look at Draculaura and Claudine. I'm not gonna go into as much detail because I don't have as much detail. Um, first for Draculaura, I'm not gonna show the leak pictures in this video, but you guys can easily find them. If you look it up all right and i think she's the one that's the most reminiscent of the older dolls and not in the best way i really love the fashion i think the fashion is reminiscent of the original 2010 doll it has new things it's exciting it's fun it's very draculaura but her face is not different enough to me underneath her bang she does have very thick eyebrows um which i love like i said but i don't know her face is very similar to the old draculaura dolls it is the better version of the draculaura screening because there is a draculaura screening that i hate here's a picture of it um, but I love her curled bangs. I love her hair being curled in general because Dracula almost never had that, but it's still on, it still looks good on her and it fits the fashion style that she's doing. I love the beret. It seems to have embroidered detail on it, which is super cool. Her bag, I don't know if it's printed or not. I don't remember from the leaks, but it has leaked before, so you can confirm. It's really, really nice. It's coffin shaped. It's pink. It has straps. It's an actual fabric bag that opens. It's a really, really nice piece. And I'm so happy to see all these fabric bag pieces. Of course, Bratz has been doing this forever. Um, and I'm fine with plastic bags. Like Claudine's bag is plastic, which I'll show you guys. And I love it. But I don't know. Her bag is, um, I mean, um, generally Monster High bags were kind of just like a plastic piece that ends up in a bin, you know? Not a bin being a trash can, sorry. I realize that bin is slang for trash can, I think. Not slang, but like, that's... In Europe, people use the word bin for trash can. Bin, it, to me, is just like a thing, a container that you store things inside of. Anyway, um, my favorite thing about Dracula is that she has this really cool cape on. We have seen Dracula dolls that have like, not necessarily capes, but they'll have the spider web wings. Like, um, we've seen it before, but this is really, really new and super cute. And you can take it off if you don't like it. I really like that piece. It's really, really nice. And it looks like it attaches by tying around her neck. Um, she has a really nice top that is just the Wave 1 Draculaura top. It has some kind of necklace. And again, we don't have super close-up pictures of her. If I do find closer-up pictures while I'm editing this video, I'll put them in, though. Skirt is really cute. It looks just like the wings. It's slightly a different color, but I think it's the same color. And it just has, like, an um, organza overlay. And the organza overlay seems to have some kind of printed detail to make the spider webs. She also has some kind of plastic belt, I believe. She's so cute. I also can't wait to see what her earrings are. I'm intrigued. She has tights and they're actual tights, but it's my biggest doll pet peeve. I mention it every time I see it. It drives me crazy and I hate it. Look. Why is there a peak of ankle, not even ankle, but like mid calf? Why? Because they have that cute ruffle that you want to see but why not bring that down so that you can see it and you're not seeing a bunch of calf it's so ugly i don't get it i hate it if they were cropped higher it would make sense or if the shoes were lower it would make sense but the way there's like a weird in real life that would be like three inches or four inches of skin showing just ugh. <laughs> sorry said something i can't say on youtube the shoes look like just a glob of plastic they do have painted details but i don't know these are not good they're not even up to par with a lot of original monster high shoes they're not it um and the, the mold is very cute and the design was probably very cute but the color of plastic they chose is super like barbie dream house couch it's ugh, not a fan not a fan um but the doll overall is very cute the shoes and the tight situation is not overly distracting i really hope those tights don't stay in though because these dolls are designed most likely to stay in box i'm obviously going to be unboxing them and a lot of people will but uh a lot of times these kinds of collector dolls are meant to be like heirlooms that you keep in box so if those tights stay in, that's going to be a disaster 
Um, all right, next we're gonna be looking at Claudine, who looks like this. Her face is beautiful. It's it's still pretty reminiscent of the original Claudine doll's face, but it's much, um, it is quite different. The emotion on the face is different. I think it's very, very pretty, very monster high, um, and very on brand for Claudine. I love her eyebrows. They almost look slightly cropped on one side, like it looks, but I think that's just the lighting, because the other eyebrow looks normal. And they are, they are also bolder, but they're not as bold as Frankie's, and they're, Probably about on par with Dracula is, honestly. I really love her lip color. I can't tell exactly what it is, but it looks very good on her. She has a headband that's, that has to be a reused mold. Like, I'm pretty sure that's a reused mold, which is fine. And then she has, looks like two or three earrings in. Again, we don't have super close-up pictures of Dracula and Claudine, I apologize. Um, and she has this really nice little, it looks like a ring that goes around all of her fingers. It's very cute. She has this big fur, I don't know if that's a coat or stole, because she's holding it like a stole. Um, this doll actually is the one that reminds me the most of an like an already released Monster High doll. There's the let me look it up real quick. I think it's the Fashion Entrepreneur. I just spelled that right. Um, fashion Pack. Yeah, it and it's not the same, but it reminds me a lot of the Fashion Entrepreneur Fashion Pack, which is this. I don't. It's like the the silhouette of the outfit, the shape of the skirt, all that kind of stuff. I personally really dislike this skirt shape, but it looks it looks good on her. Um, and this outfit is the least reminiscent of the original Claudine release. They just kind of, the bag is a, it's a plastic bag, but it's molded to look like Claudine's original jacket. It's so cute. And she has lots of golden jewelry. She has her, um, she has some kind of bracelet. She has her necklace, which, uh, the necklace did leak. So there are closer up pictures of that as well. And I, the one piece I don't like on this one is the, sh the shirt. It's a little confusing with the rest of the outfit, but it is cute. And I like the faux fur stole or whatever that is a lot. It's very cute. The socks and shoes are remarkable. Frankie's have more going on. Like they're more exciting, but these shoes and socks are so pretty and they work so well with the outfit. I really, really like that piece. And yeah, I'm really glad that they kept the original face molds. I'm really glad that they are reminiscent of the old characters without just being like really boring. Re I was so scared these were going to be reproductions like the Bratz have been doing, and I hate reproductions. I'm just not on board with them. I think it's really boring and lazy, and reproductions are always... There's a few exceptions to this, but the vast majority of the time, mass-produced reproductions are terrible compared to the originals, and at that point, why not just buy the original? Why not? And you can still get original Monster High dolls for super cheap, and original Bratz dolls too. You can get most of them for super cheap. So... It would have been really, really stupid for them to re-release the originals. And I know they are expensive if you just Google, like, original release Dracula on eBay, but, like, they are abundant. You would be able to find them pretty easily. So, yeah, I really, I'm, I love this. I love, love, love this. I don't think they could have done a better job on these dolls. It's just the pricing is concerning and the fact that they announced them a day before we have to buy Frankie. Luckily, they're releasing them one at a time, which is... Thank you. But we only have like 24 hours to get our affairs in order and make sure we have $75 to buy this. It's a Friday, so I'm getting paid that day, so I'm good. But like, not the best. Not the best. But they're so pretty. They did such a good job. Like, the designers really should be proud. And it's not the designers' fault. I've been seeing people attack the designers. Don't attack the designers. It's not their fault they're priced that way. They probably had to fight tooth and nail to get the details that we got at this price because Mattel is super well known for butchering the designer's work to get a lower price point on the dolls so it's actually shocking that these dolls are this high quality and it's because of how much the monster high fans love monster high these are exceptional and again especially compared to the collectors because if you look at some of those collector releases they aren't even in quality some of them aren't even on par with the original monster high dolls which is saying something so uh, these are fantastic. These are fantastic. They also seem to come with new written diaries. I really hope they are new and they're not just reprints. If they're reprints, it's still gonna be cute. Oh, look at this. Look at this. They have, these are the, I think these are from the stock photos, but they have metallic brushes and stands. It's something so minor, but it is so cute. It's so cute. I love it so much. <laughs> and they all are especially colored for the characters. I can't wait to see Laguna and Cleo, so... Yeah. All right, now we're going to move on to Rainbow High, who posted this. Um, I don't know if they had this prepared because they knew Monster High was going to drop these today. Um, for me, I'm a big fan of Monster High. I'm a big fan of Rainbow High. I'm a big fan of lots of lines by every single doll company. 
and I don't like particularly favor one over the other. Right now my favorite to be currently collecting is Rainbow High, but that's not swaying my opinion here. I never understood when doll collectors start like bootlicking the companies. I understand, I guess, if you're a YouTuber and you're trying to get PR from the companies, but which is very dishonest to like to bootlick and try to work your way up and be dishonest with your viewers just to get yourself personal gain. That's really gross. Uh, I see it a lot in this in the uh, like YouTube space. But anyway, <laughs> that's that's not part of this. But I don't understand bootlicking for these like corporations. I, I don't get it. I understand defending a doll that you really like or defending a price. Uh, defending a price point is something else. But you know, I understand a lot of things about how the doll community interacts with these companies. But what I really can't get behind is getting really, really mad at MGA for making Shadow High. Hi, welcome back. So Shadow High clearly is because Monster High is coming back, but that's a good thing. If MGA has a direct competitor to Monster High, it's going to force Monster High to get better. If Shadow High is able to have a show, it's able to have high quality dolls, and it's able to have a similar concept at a similar or even cheaper price point, it's going to be a no-brainer and it's actually going to force Monster High to do better. Monster High had a lot of, like, I wouldn't call them copycats, I don't like to call them that sort of thing, but you know, like inspired doll lines, there were Mystic Vampires, there were Novi Stars, you could somewhat say Pinky Cooper. A lot of these dolls, like Novi Stars and Pinky Cooper, I don't think that they were necessarily designed in response to Monster High. What I think happened is that those dolls were conceptualized, but they would never have been allowed to happen if it weren't for Monster High. Monster High was a huge pioneer in the community, and I can make a whole video about copycats and why I disagree with that term so much. But my point is, one, for example, um, mermaids, mermaids? I might have something to say about mermaids, mermaids. <laughs> I have a little sneak peek about something at the end of this video, if you stay till the end, or if you skip to the end, I don't really mind. Um, mermaids, mermaids happening. A lot of people were really mad and saying, MGA, this is a cash grab. You're just trying to, like, take Mermaid High down, whatever. But that's, that's up to Spin Master and MGA to dispute. We're the community that are buying the dolls. So the more dolls on the market, the better. And the better the dolls on the market are, the better for us. If these companies are competing to get a lower price point with a higher quality product, that's good for us because that means we get a better product. We get more variety. And that's what Monster High was able to do back in 2010, was that we got this huge boom in the early 2010s of amazing, high quality, interesting doll lines, all because Monster High was able to create this new market and create this new demand for dolls. And all of these dolls had to be affordable, they had to be high quality, or they wouldn't do, they wouldn't do well. Novi Stars was one of the most innovative, interesting doll lines I think ever released, but their quality wasn't there, unfortunately. A lot of them didn't have enough articulation. Some of them couldn't even move their legs. Um, they often had polypropylene hair, and I love Novi Stars, and I will defend them to the ends of the earth, especially because of um, a lot of things that were going on behind the scenes. But that that like the reason that Novi Stars didn't last as long as it could have was because the quality wasn't there and it wasn't able to compete with Monster High but if Monster High hadn't happened we'd never gotten a Novi Stars doll line and even if I don't like a doll line that comes out like I love Mermaid High and I love Mermaids and I'm not pitting them against each other at all in this situation but if I was the type of person who didn't like Inset Eyes dolls or I didn't like what Mermaids was doing that doesn't affect me in any way because I'm enjoying Mermaid High but if or, or people that don't like Mermaid High but really like Mermaids. Mermaids wouldn't have happened without Mermaid High because I, I don't know. There's a lot of powers that be in doll companies that prevent interesting dolls from coming out. So it's it's a good example of this is that Catwalk Kitties did happen in like, I think it was like 2005 by Lennard. They didn't last very long. They didn't get anywhere. They were only really in like weird stores. They never really showed up in big discount or not, sorry, discount. They were in like discount retailers, I believe. They never really got a super wide release in America anyway. All of my um, expertise, if you could even call it that, is always based on American market because I don't know anything else. But Catwalk Kitties, and if you guys don't know them, this is the line. That line was amazing but you would never have seen Mattel release something like that. Monster High was a huge risk for Mattel but it really really paid off and that's why we've been seeing so many interesting doll lines from Mattel. We saw Ever After High. Ever After High isn't that high concept compared to Monster High but I truly believe Ever After High would never have happened had we not had Monster High. Um, well, not only because, sorry, I just mean like a line like Ever After High. I know Ever After High is like a successor to Monster High. It's meant to be like a, a sister line but even if Monster High had never happened and they wanted to make a fairy tale line like that, I don't think it would have happened is the point I'm trying to get across there.
there's just somebody has to take a risk one of these companies has to take a risk and it has to pay off for stuff like this to start happening so cowboy kitties was super innovative super interesting they actually had decent decent quality i have one decent quality at least for the one that i have um and they had a good price point they had a lot of really positive things going for them but they just never took off so you didn't see anything like that and gorgeous creatures is another example that's what these these i believe these are from the 80s or 90s they're pretty old i'll have a correction on the screen about those those happened they didn't really do much they they kind of faded into obscurity that happened to cowboy kitties pinky cooper only happened from and the bridge the bridge direct is kind of a smaller um company i believe i don't really know what else they release i think it's mostly like i don't like separating toys between like boys and girls but i think they do boys brands mainly at least that's how they would describe it to their shareholders Peggy Cooper was able to happen by Carter Bryant, by the way. Peggy Cooper is one of the best doll lines I think has ever released. It's so, so cool. If you guys aren't familiar with these dolls, they're remarkable. This is them. Um, it only was able to happen at the time that it happened because of Monster High. And unfortunately, it was outcompeted. But those dolls are so good. They're so good. But anyway, I know I've been talking about this for a while, but it's because I just have a lot to say about it. Anyways, I just ranted for 20 minutes straight. I'm not going to leave that in, but um, my point is it allows for competition. It allows for interesting ideas. It allows for really innovative ideas to actually hit the market. And it's really positive. I think it's a really positive thing. And I'm really, really excited to see what's next. As a consumer with absolutely no stake in how these dolls do, if they fail, it does not affect me other than the fact that if I like that doll, I can't buy it anymore. You know, um, as a consumer, like most of us are watching this video, I don't understand gatekeeping or gatekeeping certain like doll ideas and bootlicking for these companies because truly I don't really think they care that much about you. The only reason they're going to start giving us higher quality a lot of the time is because they're trying to compete with another doll line. The only reason they're going to give us a lower price point is because they're trying to compete with another doll line. So as the consumer, there's no real reason to do that. I don't know. Um, and again, I'm a really, really, really big fan of a lot of these doll lines and I will defend them, but there's a certain point where it's like, why are you attacking somebody for liking something else because you think it's a copy of something else when nothing is original at this point? There's like a hundred layers of copied things. Monster High is super innovative and interesting and original, but there's other doll lines before them like Cowboy Kitties, like um, Gorgeous Creatures, like Shimmers that have similar ideas that clearly were inspirations. That doesn't mean the Monster High is a copycat line by any means, but if Gorgeous Creatures, for example, was bigger, I think people would be saying like, oh, it's monster high copied that and it's just it's a circular argument it doesn't go anywhere it's silly and it doesn't help anybody and why are we defending these companies tooth and nail like this i don't get it anyway i'm very excited for shadow high there's leaks you guys can find them i don't put leaks in my videos generally <laughs> um but it they're easy to find i promise or somebody can link them in the description i'll let the link go through it's fine um the last thing i want to say is that Although the release date has been pushed, and I'll talk about that, there are some really, really cool mermaid dolls in the other room, and here's a little sneak peek. Alrighty, thank you guys so, so much for watching, and this is meant to be a discussion style video, so I would love to hear what you guys have to say about these dolls. I'm head over heels excited for every single doll that I've talked about in this video. These are super, super cool. Um, Every single one of these is amazing. Every single one of these is indicative of the high competition in the doll market right now. And I cannot wait to see these and I can't wait to show these guys to you on my channel. I, <laughs> Mattel does not know I exist, I don't think. So I, I don't have any kind of special PR to do for you guys, but I'll be buying them if I can. And I'll be sharing them with you guys just because I'm really passionate about them and I think they're amazing. Um, I am going to be part of the launch of something cool tomorrow. So, you know, <laughs> um, Anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching. For real this time. Bye.